Thank you, Sister Christine. Okay, we got a couple of birthdays. We want to wish Sasha a happy birthday. Sasha? Amen. Antonio, we have a birthday for Antonio today. Happy birthday. Let's all sing happy birthday together. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Sasha and Antonio. Happy birthday to you. Amen. May God bless you and keep you. Many more happy and healthy ones. Amen? Okay. Um, we got a couple of, uh, well, you know, there's a fellowship after the service today. You know that. I'd like to see you downstairs. Um, March 11th, it's a Saturday. Pastor wants to have a prayer breakfast. What time is Pastor? Do you know? 10 o'clock, Saturday morning, March 11th, okay? And Pastor's also starting a converse class on March 5th. Okay, that'll be following the service. Amen? Well, there's a couple of things, too. Uh, we want to pray for Sister Joyce's Aunt Josephine, who's not doing too well. She's going to be going into hospice, okay? We want to pray for Brother Doc. You know, he's uh, still in rehab. He's been through a lot, Brother Doc. God bless him. He's a good man. He loves the Lord, and we love to have him here at Lighthouse. Amen? I want to pray for my cousin Butch, who used to come to Lighthouse with his son Anthony. He has an autistic boy. He lost his daughter last year. He's by himself, really, and he's not doing too well physically, okay? Uh, just please keep him in prayer. You know, I try to reach him with God's word. Maybe one day the pastor and I and some of the board members, we will go visit him and pray with him, okay? There are a lot of needs in this church, okay? I know everybody has their own personal needs, unspoken requests. Um, but prayer is important. Prayer is important. And the most we can do is just reach out to God. And God hears our prayers. God answers prayers. He is faithful, and just to forgive us and hear our prayers and to heal our wounds. God is good. God is wonderful. We just have to believe. It's, it's just a little drop of faith. It's just believing that God can. We know he can, but he will if we're willing. So let's just stand up for one minute. Let's just take these prayer requests to the Lord. I promise you it won't be long. Father God, we just reach out to you today, Lord God. Lord Jesus says, by my stripes you are healed. But more importantly, we just plead the power, the precious blood of Jesus on these needs. Cover them, Lord God, with your precious blood, Lord God. It's present, all ills must flee, Lord God. Lord, let your spirit hover over them. Let them be filled in their hearts, Lord God. Lord, we just thank you, Lord God, that we can come to the throne of grace, that we can ask for these things in prayer. This is what you want of us, Lord God. You want us to believe. You want, Lord God, touch these needs. Touch everyone, Lord God, that, that's going through something today. Touch our youth. Touch our, our leaders in this country, Lord God. Touch our families, Lord God. Touch our neighbors. Touch all those around us, Lord God. Let them know who you are, our sovereign God, our loving God, our merciful God. In Jesus' precious name, amen and amen. You may be seated. Thank you again. Our uh, beloved pastor, let me just say a few words about our pastor before I call him our shepherd to preach the word. And it's every Sunday that, you know, we come to church and we hear our pastor preach. But do we really listen to what he's saying? I mean, the last couple of Sundays, I just sat there and I felt convicted. Why? Because I was really listening to that, the word that he was preaching. He preaches God's word. It's directly from the word of God. Like I said before, the Bible is the body and blood of Christ. This is our foundation of salvation. Once we're saved, once we accept the Lord, once we're filled with the Holy Ghost, we got to open that word. We got to meditate on that word because that's what keeps us going. That's what keeps us founded and rooted in, the, in God himself in walking and living now. Now, we got a pastor here that I remember coming to this church, and I don't want to take too long, in 1976, I walked into this church. I was born and raised Roman Catholic. A lot of you know my uh, testimony, and I'm not going to give it because it's long. 
But being in this church for as long as I have, I remember the pastor who was the pastor at the time, Pastor Stegan, walking up to me and he said to me, he said, Tom, if you want to grow in God's word, you got to get busy in the church. And I used to sit back there every Sunday. I used to come in, sneak in in the back late always, and, you know, just hide away. And Pastor Stegan knew that. He saw me coming in. when <laughs> He must have saw me every Sunday. So he walks up to me and he says, Tom, I need ushers. Can you be an usher? And I'm not going to say no. I said, oh, sure, Pastor Stegan, I could be an usher. One thing led to another. I became an usher, the head of the... And then this opportunity came to drive a van. We needed van drivers because we had new families that were living in Left Rock City that needed to be picked up and come to the church. It was Pastor Deo and his family, Sister Gloria Singh, and all these wonderful people. So I worked six days a week. My wife was a man, and she says, you work six days a week. Now Sunday you're going to go to church and drive the van. And those days, you used to drive the van in the morning, pick them up, bring them back in the afternoon, and come back at night. But I'll tell you, God knows what he's doing. God has a purpose. God has a plan. So picking up past the day on his family, they were the nicest, quietest people. And my wife says to me, who are the people that you pick up? I said, the beautiful family. I said, they live in Leverack City. They're so quiet. I think Sister Ophelia just had Amy. She was a little baby, barely cried, barely made noise. Barely. Little did we know that one day that this gentleman, Dale Gear, was going to be our pastor. Little did we know. I mean, we had the pastor at that, that time was Pastor Emil now. Pastor Emil came into this church after Pastor Stegan retired, and he said, I'm going to be here seven years. And seven years to the day, he left. He wasn't going to be here anymore. So I was on the, I've been on the board for quite a while. So I was on the board. I believe Dale was on the board at the time. Right, Dale? Yeah. And we started bringing people into the church. Now, we had to go through this, you know, this whole process of getting a new pastor. And that was painful because we didn't know who do we want, who's going to be used to us, who's going to want to be at Lighthouse. And most of the questions asked, and being on the board, you know, you had the right to sit down and interview and ask them. And my one question was, do you have foresight? Do you see a future for Lighthouse? None of them said yes. <laughs> All these guys, most of them came from the Midwest. These were coming through the Assemblies of God. But myself, and I believe Paul Matthews on the board, and we knew Pastor, well, we knew Deo. He was a humble man, a man that we knew loved God. And he had a vision for Lighthouse. None of these other pastors did. So. The next thing was, why don't we put up Deo as pastor? At first, Pastor Deo, he was shy, laid back. I don't think he, he wanted to be pastor of this church. But we told him, Pastor, pray about it. See what you know, God tells you. And sure enough, here we are today. God had sent us this lovely man, beautiful family. And look, in the words of Ivo Tassi, I don't know if anybody remembers Ivo Tassi. Pastor Dale Gear has been the best pastor we've ever had in this church. These are his words. Amen? Yes, yes. Give us a round of applause. God bless our pastor. God bless this man. He's been through. And listen, like I said, I've been on this board a long time, and I've seen a lot of people come and go. I've seen a lot of problems come into the church. Not everybody that walks into this church is a born-again, God-loving person. They come into this church, and sometimes I think Satan sends them here just to throw a wrench into the works, you know? But I seen our pastor go through a lot, and he handled it like a gentleman. He took it on the chin, and we prayed for him, and we should still continue to pray for him. He's a good man. He's blessed. He, he loves his family. He loves Lighthouse. I love him. I love this church. And again, thank you for being a part of Lighthouse. Continue to pray, and please continue to pray for revival. Yes, I'm excited about what's going on in Asbury. And people from all over the world, yeah, but we can have revival right here. We got to pray for revival. That's what it's all about. Revival's here. I'm excited. Get excited, please. And our dear pastor, pastor, will you come and bring us your word? Thank you. The word of God. Amen. Thank you very much, Brother Tom. Praise God. Um, take that with a grain of salt. Yes, thank you. Brother Tom used to come Sunday night. 
he had a, a wagon, a maroon wagon, and he would pick us up and take us back to Lefrac. Wonderful, wonderful brother. We love him. He's a wise man. Amen. <clears throat> it's not about me, folks. It's about God. Amen. Amen. We give God the glory because it is God. It is God who blesses us, who has called us, and who will keep us. Amen. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hebrews chapter 4. Our world has been going through a lot, so I want to read this word to you today. Hebrews 4.12. <clears throat> Excuse me. And you should memorize this. For the word of God is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword and piercing as far as the division of soul and spirit of both joints and marrow and able, able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. The word of God. Now we live today and the theme of my message today is a very simple one. It is called <clears throat> the unchanging word in a changing world. The unchanging word in a changing world. Heavenly Father, we thank you because your word is true. And God, we are so grateful to you for speaking to us, for calling us out of sin, out of darkness, out of heathenism, that we can walk in the light. Thank you for this salvation that we have. We have a hope that one day we will be with you in heaven. Help us, Lord Jesus, to live for you and to do your will. Help us to let our light shine. That God, others will see Christ in us and be one for your kingdom. And so use us, I pray to be your living epistles that would be easily read of all, all men. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen and amen. Now, it's a very strong <coughs> statement the writer of Hebrews is making there. And <coughs> I want to remind us, beloved, we are living in an age of what we would say unprecedented changes. So many changes are happening in our world today. Sociologists tell us that knowledge doubles every five years. Well, the, the way the world is going, it seems as if knowledge is doubling every year. <clears throat> Think about it. There's a population explosion in the world. The world today is nearly 8 billion people. Think about that. It's like you can't even begin to comprehend it. Population explosion, we see also we are witnessing today what we call explosions in uh, all kinds of, of apparatuses. We think of the ICT technology, computer technology. It is even moving so fastly that uh, some of these uh, that they made five years ago have become obsolete. They're not making them anymore. Advancement in technology and knowledge. In the book of Daniel we read, and because iniquity shall abound, he talks about uh, the spread of knowledge. Knowledge shall be on the increase. Word 
is everywhere. You can have an event that is happening in the Antarctic region and uh, folks in the Arctic region can have, as it were, immediate information through the technology of the iPhone that we have today. There is also other explosions that we think about transportation. I was looking a couple of weeks ago. There is in Japan what they call the bullet train. And this train moves uh, so rapidly, that it's, it's right to call it a bullet train. It's like a blur. And so all these, uh, you see, technology, because of the advancement uh, in the sciences, but it's all about knowledge. And what is happening in our world today is that I want to bring to your attention, and this is my main goal here today, there's another explosion that's taking place in the world, and that explosion is called unbelief. Unbelief, because Satan is peddling his lies, trying as much as he can to make people not believe the word of God. And even in the church today, there are unbelievers. Nobody says amen. amen. I'll, I'll explain. Amen. There are some that are saying that there is no virgin birth of Christ. There are some that are preaching also that there is no trinity. There are some that preach, you see, all kinds of stuff. They do not believe in healing. They do not believe in heaven or hell. And the Bible clearly teaches these are some of the basic teachings or doctrines of the Bible. And so they are not. Believing the word of God, they are like uh, in the days of Adam and Eve uh, when the devil stepped on the scene and he enticed them. Has God really said that? He planted that seed called unbelief and they fell for it. May God have mercy on us uh, when the church becomes uh, simply an opinion maker instead of a character shaped maker. In other words, the church is about shaping character. The world is about making characters. The Mickey Mouses, etc. The world has their production. But God produces uh, a pure and a clean heart. Uh, God produces uh, the Nicodemuses of this world, uh, changing them uh, from wicked, evil, conniving sinners into saints of God. And church, I say to us, uh, it's all because of the word of God. <clears throat> you see, the word of God will stand, number one. The word will stand against uh, skepticism. The skeptics. <clears throat> Today, skepticism teaches unbelief. It teaches infidelity. It teaches everything that goes against uh, the word of God. Those are the skeptics. They live their lives to please themselves. Uh, and they think uh, that this word of God does not apply to them. And so Christianity is being tested. The word of God is being tested today in this changing world. And uh, there are many, even some preachers, who will tell you we need to change some things in the Bible to accommodate their lifestyles. But beloved, the word of God reminds us Heaven and earth shall pass away, but not one jot, not one tittle, not one iota of my word will pass away. In other words, the word of God will stand the test of time. Amen. And so we would rather believe God than believe the world. That's what it boils down to. 
Every day the word of God is under attack. From the atheists, the skeptics, oh, they all come. They try in so many ways and means to discredit the word of God. There's a brilliant Englishman. He died recently, last year. Hawking, I don't know if you've known him, brilliant scientist. But this man didn't believe in God. There's another British writer, and I heard the story of him. A man called Malcolm Muggeridge. Malcolm Muggeridge was a, a, a journalist for one of the um, newspapers in England, a brilliant man. He didn't believe in God. One day, he, he was a correspondent for, I said, one of the British newspapers. He was in, a, in India. <clears throat> and this man was a womanizer and stuff. And one morning early, he got up, and as he was heading towards uh, <clears throat> one of the rivers there in India to have a swim, he saw at a distance a lady undressing to also go in the river. For a swim. And so Malcolm Mudge, this story is told by Dr. Ravi, the late Dr. Ravi Zacharias. <clears throat> Mugridge went in, he swam towards the lady. As he neared the lady, he saw something that really shook him. As he got nearer, he saw that the lady's face was disfigured. He saw in simple terms she was a leper. And then he cringed. These are the words <coughs> written about him. He cringed at the sight of that creature. And he felt so like rotten on the inside. cried out to God, asked God for forgiveness and to come into his heart. He became a Christian. And he went about preaching the word of God. This former atheist, unbeliever, became a believer. Brothers and sisters, I want you to know, it's the word of God that makes us realize that we are sinners, that we are lost, that without God we are heading for a lost eternity. You see, it's so important, church. Uh, <clears throat> many make all kinds of statements uh, and they make the, all these postulations about Christianity, about the Bible, and uh, they say that the Bible is antique. Or they say that the Bible <coughs> is uh, filled with uh, a lot of stories or fallacies, all excuses they make uh, as to trying to discredit the word of God. But there are many atheists who in trying to discredit this word of God as they studied it from Genesis to Revelation, they became Christians. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because this is the word of God. It is sound. The Bible teaches us that the word of God is infallible. It is the inspired word of God. And listen, you can read all the reviews in magazines, newspapers, or read essays by great minds, etc. But the Bible still remains the best seller in the world today. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so we need to understand. Philosophy will not cut it. Philosophy <clears throat> brings you into a lot of speculation. They teach you, okay, this is how this man thought. These are his writings, etc. But as you <clears throat> read about all these uh, philosophers... You understand one thing, that they do not have a basic foundation for whatever they believe. 
It is all built on assumptions. When you get into the word of God, you understand as you open up your Bible, in the beginning, God. Think of that. Those few words. In the beginning, God. And it strikes you. It makes you understand that uh, what philosophers are telling you, it's baseless because they have no foundation. But the Bible has a foundation. In the beginning, God. God is there. God was always existent. And it's no assumption. The scriptures teach us. <clears throat> there is power. In the blood of Jesus Christ. Power to cleanse. Power to save. To deliver. To set free. Hallelujah. That God is the healer. He's the healer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so we need to understand uh, that <clears throat> this word of God does not change. Oh yes, the world will change. But the word of God doesn't. Don't believe what the skeptics say. You see, this is the tragedy of it all. That uh, <clears throat> multitudes of people become unstable I said it, sometimes Christians can be caught in that wave of listening to the skeptics and getting drawn in, carried away by this great tidal wave of iniquity because that's what this changing world is all about. The longer you live, you're seeing more and more iniquity, ungodliness, immorality, Corruption. It's happening every day. And so we need to take a stand. That the word of God is true. Heaven and earth will pass away. But not the word of God. Amen. Amen. David reminds us. Your word is a lamp unto my feet. Meaning it opens up the way for me to walk. A light to my pathway, giving me direction that I would not sidetrack. <clears throat> the word of God is alive, beloved. <clears throat> the writer says it's sharper than a two-edged sword. That simply means that uh, what goes uh, for the congregation also applies to the pastor. It's not me telling you. Do as I say, but don't do as I do. No, no. Amen. The word of God is the standard of our Christian practice. We live by the word of God. That's why it's a two-edged sword. It applies to you, it applies to me. Amen. None of us is bigger than the word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then uh, he reminds us, not only is it, uh, you see, that sharper than that two-edged sword. You go in the book of Jeremiah, and Jeremiah describes the word of God as a hammer. A hammer that breaks the rock, those rock uh, of assumptions, uh, those rock of philosophies, you name them. The word of God is a hammer that pulverizes them. That the power of the word will break uh, the hardest of hearts. Amen. Hallelujah. And I've seen it. I've seen criminals become saints of God. Uh, having heard the word of God. <clears throat> At crusades. I've seen this. My pastor went to a place called All Boys Tongue in Guyana. And it's notorious. It's one of those slum areas in Georgetown. Evil people. They rob you daylight, night, any night or day. And a notorious criminal came to the crusade. 
He would try to disrupt the meeting the first night, second night. A few nights later, this same man, towering man, all kinds of marks on his face and stuff. He, you look at him and you know this was a criminal. But he came up to the altar and he accepted Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's what the word of God will do, beloved. It will remove uh, the skepticism from lives. It will change you. It will make of you a new person, a new creation. That's what the word of God will do. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Glory to God. Secondly, God's word will stand against uh, the tide of atheism. Atheism. You see, a missionary told this story. He said one day, this is in the Philippines, he said one day a guy came up as he was walking, he saw on the street corner a young man, but this young man looked rough and rugged and he said to himself, he not have come out from the jungle. He goes closer, he peeps, he sees this young man reading the Bible. <clears throat> and so, as a young man sat there reading the Bible, this passerby stops. And he said, what are you reading? Bible. Couldn't speak much English. He said, Bible. When he said that, this, <clears throat> this passerby, he said, you believe that? He said, that's not true. Those things are not true. And so this is what the Filipino said. Now he stood up. He said, six months ago, missionary came, preached the word, I get saved. And as he stood up now, he really stretched out. He towered over the puny passerby. He said, six months ago, without this Bible, you, I cook and eat. When he said that, that, <laughs> that guy took off. He took off. I could have beaten Usain Bolt in that sprint. It's simply this, beloved, <clears throat> that the word of God will stand against the tide of atheism because I tell you, the word of God is true. You see, we must understand that there is a plague of unbelief in the world today. You heard it from the missionaries. Scotland, in the 1700s, they produced some great missionaries that went all over the world. That's how the Church of Scotland came about. John Knox, a fiery preacher, was from Scotland. But today, Scotland is virtually an atheist nation. Why? Because atheism crept in. They started going after the things of the world. And that's why I say to us, church, we need to understand. We must stay in the word of God. The word of God never changes. Yes, people's beliefs, opinions, etc. will change. But the word of God does not change. And so we must remember this word of God is unchanging. And we need to stand up, stand up for truth, stand up for righteousness. <clears throat> Here we are in a country that is blessed. And you think of it, one of the reasons this country is blessed, beloved, is that this country has been sending out missionaries all over the world. Amen. Hallelujah. 
the Assemblies of God alone has over 3,800 missionaries that are on the mission field at home and abroad. We believe in missions. This is one of the founding, you see, founding stands that this church, the Assemblies of God, took when it came into being that they would study the word of God and that they would preach the word. And they sent out missionaries every which way as they felt the call of God and listened. Countries that were atheistic heard the word of God. It's still happening today. The word of God is changing lives, beloved. You see, this atheism is a plague. It's a plague in the world today. It's a, what we call the old enemy in a new garment. It started in the Garden of Eden. When the devil approached him, did God really say that? What he was doing, putting question in her mind. Don't believe what God said. God knows the day you eat of it, you'll become like God. She fell for the bait. Sin came into the world. Because of that sin, <clears throat> this world has been cursed. All because of yielding to the devil. Unbelief will destroy you and everything that you have. Faith in God, on the other hand, will change your life, will make you new, and will help you on your way. Faith in God will move mountains. Faith in God will calm all those troubled storms that may come against you. Since Adam and Eve failed, beloved, the devil has not stopped trying to get gullible people to fall for his bait. He feeds them this fallacy of unbelief. Our world is heading in that direction. That's what's happening. Unbelief. The devil brings all kinds of philosophies. Trying to take, as it were, <clears throat> that word of God from us. Listen, church, we must understand that we have a responsibility that responsibility is to preach Christ and him crucified. Let the world know God loves them. God cares for them. Because they're believing the lies of the devil. I told you the story. The famous French philosopher Voltaire. He didn't believe in God. But it is said. <clears throat> on his deathbed. He was crying out in agony. A nurse was with, his, with him at his bedside. And she said afterwards, this man was screaming, screaming. I could feel the flames. I could feel the flames. The fire of hell couldn't wait. For him to die, it was already reaching out to him. And that nurse, she said she was never the same. She gave up nursing because she went like crazy just thinking. She would have nightmares of our patient Voltaire. How this man would cry out in agony. Don't let it go to that stage. Remember, there's a world <clears throat> that is crying out. They're crying out. They want to hear the truth. They want to know God. Church, we are called to be that vehicle that will carry the word to them. We have a responsibility. 
Don't let this changing world influence you to think that the word of God <clears throat> will change and that somehow, somewhere, you know, they will hear it. No, God has called you and me that we would go and tell. He has called you and me to these missions. Part of <clears throat> our missions is to support those missionaries that are there. Their photographs are there on, on that missions board. It's important that we help to get uh, this message, uh, the word of God, out there. Amen. That everyone will have an opportunity of hearing the message uh, of the gospel. Don't uh, be idle. Don't be despondent concerning all the negative influences of the atheists and the skeptics. Listen, they're providing a service for their master, the devil. We as Christians are called to provide a service also for our master. And that is to go and to tell. Amen. To be a witness. Tell your neighbor, tell your friend. Tell even your enemy if you have one about God and his love for them, beloved. Listen, you read of the Ten Commandments and you will see when God gave the Ten Commandments, <clears throat> it is said, this is what one um, scholar, Bible scholar said, uh, that God didn't even deem it necessary to condemn atheists, mainly because atheism was and is rare and possibly non-existent, unquote. In other words, uh, there is no room for atheism. When you think of it seriously, study it. You have to believe in something. And so my point today, church, is we must be prepared, prepared for every eventuality. You see, the word of God prepares us. When you are in the word of God, you are prepared for every and any eventuality. For the Bible says, Jesus said it. He said, look, when they will haul you before the magistrates. And so he said, don't you worry about what you will say. At that time, the Holy Spirit will give you the words to say. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why we still preach, it's not by might, it's not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. We are people of the spirit. We are Pentecostals. We know there is power in the name of Jesus. We know that we have the victory because Christ defeated the devil on Calvary's cross. Hallelujah. And because he lives, church, we will live also. Amen. Hallelujah. We have a hope. Yeah. Glory to God. And so don't believe uh, what the atheists say. Listen, David summed it up beautifully. <clears throat> he nailed it on the head. And I urge you read it. Psalm 53, 1. David said what? The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. You look around and see all the beauty. The spring will be coming soon. You drive on the throughway and stuff and you see those trees beginning to blossom. And oh, you are like in a different world. You begin to appreciate the glory of God, the majesty of God. You look at those daffodils coming up and all those beautiful flowers. And oh, you see the glory of God. I just get excited when springtime comes around. I love flowers. I love to see them. Hallelujah. And you can't tell me that there is not a God. You look at the surroundings. You see even in those animals how they're so overly protective of their young, etc. They just didn't happen. God made them. That's the word of God. The Bible teaches us that. 
You see, the atheist is sentenced to one, one recourse in life. And that is that he will spend his life just striking out against God. That's all he does. Strikes out against God. But remember the words of the psalmist. The fool, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Don't believe the fool. Believe the word of God. Amen. I'd rather believe the word of God than anything else. Uh, thirdly, <clears throat> I move through this. Remember, God's word will test today. People talk about modernism. They talk about all these new isms that are coming up. Uh, I want you to know one thing. <clears throat> Think about this and understand. The world today is heading on a collision course. That collision course is where the devil is rising up, raising that army to move against Israel. And God will step in and it's, listen, it's, it's happening. The stage is set, I do believe that. I do believe the coming of the Lord is near. I do believe the rapture of the church is near. And hallelujah, we need, we need to get ready, church. Listen, it's not time for us to play church. It's time to live, live the Bible. Obey the word of God. Do what the word of God says. What is modernism today? Anything goes. They tell you, if it feels good, just do it. Come on. That's crazy. Just do it. <laughs> you get into trouble. But that's, that's what the devil is pushing. That's his agenda. He's telling people, listen. You can't use the words of Christianity anymore. We have, by the way, there are some Bible colleges that are teaching that, you know what, we need to re-examine the scriptures because some of these things are kind of outdated. In other words, they're trying to say the Bible is not the inspired word of God. That's what they're trying to say. And so, instead of producing seminarians, they're producing cemeterians, I call them. People heading for the cemetery. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's my coin of phrase. But that's exactly what they're doing because they're leading people to hell. They have some preachers who will tell you Nothing is wrong with homosexuality. As a matter of fact, they have some homosexuals who are preachers. But my Bible hasn't changed. It doesn't change. And my Bible tells me it is an abomination unto God. Amen. Oh, I love them. They come to church, hallelujah, I'll pray for them. That's the Christian in us, we love everybody. No matter how rotten, wicked, evil, conniving sinners they may be. But I say, church, don't lower your standard because the world doesn't have any standard. Look at it. The world doesn't have any standard. And so we need to stand, stand our ground for God. Christians everywhere should be growing, growing, not tired of reading the word, but growing and growing in God. We need God in America. We need God in our world. And so we, as the church, must be ready. You see, if we don't do it, if we don't spread the word, who will? 
The devil won't. His agents won't. It's us, the church, the believers in Christ, the body of Christ. We are called to do the will of God. And so we live in this changing world, but don't change your standards. Don't give up your values. Stand your ground for God. <clears throat> the Bible says, uh, James the beloved wrote, he said, submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will what? flee. He will flee from you. That's right. We don't have to flee from the devil. It's the devil who has to flee from us. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. This unchanging world is full of demons and devils. But he that is in us, the Holy Spirit, energizes us. He gives us the power, the anointing to do the will of God. And I tell you, beloved, we are called of God to do God's will. Hallelujah. I close with this story. It was told by a pastor. He said, and I quote, <clears throat> there's a story told about a little boy who developed a terrible stomach ache from overeating in a feast of green apples. Because of the pain, he was obliged to tell his mother of his dilemma. Upon hearing of his misfortune and remembering the doctrine of her church, she informed him that he was wrong. He didn't have a stomach ache. It was all in the head. The boy reflected for a moment, then grabbed his stomach as the gnawing pain started again and said, Mom, I believe you're mistaken this time. <clears throat> I have inside information on the deal. You didn't get it. His inside information, he was feeling the pain in his stomach. You see, the church he attended said, no, no, you don't get pain and stuff. It's all in the head. Brothers, sisters, we need to thank God. For the inside information. You know who's the inside information? The Holy Spirit. He lives in us. Hallelujah. It's time we begin to walk with God. To live for God. To do the will of God. And so I say to every one of us today. Church, we are living in a world that is heading for a lost eternity. It's a changing world, destroying homes, destroying lives, destroying families. But the word of God will stand the test of time. Listen, emperors try to discredit it. Uh, scoffers and mockers, including Saul of Tarsus, try to discredit the word of God. But the word of God will always prevail. Hallelujah. Heaven and earth will pass away, but not one jot or tittle of God's word will pass away. Empires have come and gone. They've tried to destroy the word of God, but the word of God still stands today. Many, many have tried, but to no avail, because this is the infallible word of God. It is the inerrant word of God. It will stand as it has withstood all the tests and the trials of the atheist, the modernist, and whoever they be. I say, beloved, we need the word of God today. <clears throat> Don't change. Don't change your lifestyle to accommodate the devil and his emissaries. You stand your ground for God. And God will be there with you. And God will give you the victory. And I close. If God be for us. Who can be against us? Amen. Amen. If God be for us. Who can be against us? Let's focus on him. As we bow our heads.
and close our eyes. I ask us today, let's turn our eyes upon him. Let's look fully into his face. See the Lord Jesus. See him and understand that he is calling us to do his will. He's saying, like he said to Peter, feed my sheep, feed my sheep. We are all children of God. Let us do his bidding. Turn your eyes on him. Hallelujah. See him <clears throat> as he reaches out to you. He's saying, feed my sheep. He's saying, go and tell. Spread the word. Let the world know. It's time we start looking unto Jesus. Stop looking at the world and the things in the world. Let's start looking to the Lord Jesus. He is still the author and the finisher of our faith. Would you stand with me, please? Let's sing together. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face and the things of this world will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace and as we sing i want us to just focus on him looking on to jesus he is the author and the finisher of our faith let's sing together turn your eyes Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of this world. And the things of this world will grow strangely dim in the light. In the light of his glory and grace. One more time, turn your eyes up. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of this Thank you.
Thank you. I